verse. Yes, Tony. Today's verse will be from the sixth canto, third chapter, verse 25. Three, six, twenty-five. Yes, Tony. Om again, Timidandasya, Genajana Salakaya. Chaksu unmilitam yena tas my shri gudavena maha. Nama om Vishnu padaya. Krishna prastaya butale. Shri makti bhakti vedanta swami iti namane. Namaste saraswati devi gongavani pacharine. Evasesa sunyavari pastyatya de sutarine. Manchakalpa Taru Bischa, Kripa Sindhu Pei Bacha, Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so, uh, as we like to occasionally perform is a class simply dedicated to the importance of the holy name of the Lord. So this verse is very much in line with that. <laughs> Devam bimoham batabata maya yam, maya yam. Vayam jagat kritam matir madu pushpata yam. Van vaitan dike mahati karmani uja ujya manaha. Translation, because they are bewildered by the illusionary energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Yagya Bokya and Jamini and other compilers of the religious scripture cannot know the secret confidential religious system of the 12 Mahajans. They cannot understand the transcendental value of performing devotional service or chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Because their minds are attracted to the ritualistic ceremonies mentioned in the Vedas, especially the Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Rig Veda, their intelligence has become dull. Thus, they are busy collecting the ingredients for ritualistic ceremonies that yield only temporary benefits, such as elevation to Svarga Loga for material happiness. They are not attracted to the Sankirtan movement. Instead, they are interested in Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha to the Prabhupada's purport. Since one may easily achieve the highest success of, by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one may ask why there are so many Vedic ritualistic ceremonies and why people are attracted to them. This verse answers that question. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 15:15, Vedas Chasavar Ahameva Vedya. The real purpose of studying the Vedas is to approach the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Unfortunately, unintelligent people bewildered by the grandeur of Vedic yagyas want to see the gorgeous sacrifices performed. They want Vedic mantras chanted and huge amounts of money spent for such ceremonies. <laughs> Sometimes we have to observe the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies to please such unintelligent men. Recently, when we were when we established a large Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan, we were obliged to have Vedic ceremonies enacted by Brahmanas. Because the inhabitants of Vrindavan, especially the smarter Brahmanas, would not accept European and Americans as bona fide brahmanas. Thus we had to engage brahmanas to perform costly yagyas. In spite of these yagyas, the members of our society perform sankirtan loudly with mardangas, and I considered the sankirtan more important than the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. Both the ceremonies and the sankirtan were going on simultaneously. 
The ceremonies were meant for persons interested in Vedic rituals, for elevations to heavenly planets, Jadikirte Matir, Madhu Pushpata Yamna. Whereas the Sankirtan was meant for pure devotees interested in pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We would simply have performed Sankirtan, but then the inhabitants of Vrindavan would not have taken the installation ceremony seriously. As explained here, the Vedic performances are meant for those intelligences who has, that has been dulled by the flowery language of the Vedas, which describe fruit of activities intended to elevate one to the higher planets. Especially in this age of Kali, Sankirtan alone is sufficient. If members of our temple in different parts of the world simply contend in Sankirtan before the deity, especially before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they will remain perfect. There is no need for any other performances. Nevertheless, to keep oneself clean in habits and mind, deity worship and other regulative principles are required. Srila Deva Goswami says that although Sankirtan is sufficient for the perfection of life, the archanam or worship of the deity in the temple must continue in order that the devotees may stay clean and pure. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur therefore recommended one follow both processes simultaneously. We strictly follow the, his principle of performing deity worship and Sankirtan along parallel lines. This we should continue. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So there are many verses throughout the Vedic scriptures, especially the three Vedas that are mentioned here, Sama Veda, Yagya Veda, and Rig Veda, for elevation from one material situation to a higher one. The Vedas are vast, Triguna Visaya Veda, Nistraguna Bhavarjuna, Nirdvandva Nityasattva Sto, Nir Yogam Shema Advabha, Krishna speaks this verse to Arjuna in the second chapter. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, where he says, the Vedas deal with, mainly with the three modes of material nature. Rise above these modes, Arjuna. Be transcendental. Be free from all anxieties and all dualities for gain and safety and thus be situated within the self. So Krishna is saying that, yes, the Vedas are the foundation for all knowledge, including the essence of spiritual knowledge. But the Vedas cover many, many different. Why do the Vedas cover so much broad, both material and spiritual knowledge? It's because people are on different levels of the of existence. And therefore, in order to elevate one from whatever particular level they are on to the next higher level, the Veda give different prescriptions in order for those people to make progress towards the goal of life. People in the modes of ignorance will be elevated to the mode of passion. People in the mode of passion be elevated to the mode of goodness. So from the mode of goodness is where devotional service really starts to develop. It, go to goodness is still within the range of material. In other words, the good qualities that are performed in, in service to the Lord that accompany uh, ritualistic activities. For instance, uh, being tolerant, being patient, uh, knowing the Vedic scriptures and how to perform various ritualistic ceremonies. Um, being humble, um, clean, truthful, uh, prideless. Uh, these are some simple. Gyan, um, Vigyan, knowing the knowledge in the Vedas. So these are some of the qualities that Krishna lists in the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter where he describes 
qualities of a Brahmana. <laughs> so we have a vast amount of knowledge. So people will say, well, since the Vedas are the essence of spiritual knowledge, then we can accept any parts of the Vedas. But Krishna gives, he qualifies that by saying, one has to engage in those activities that elevate one above the three modes, triguna vis, above the three modes of life, not from one mode to another. Um, sometimes we find it is very difficult for a living entity to move quickly. And we see that in our society here in Krishna consciousness, devotees who have come to Krishna consciousness, uh, mostly from Western backgrounds, because there's no some scars in the Western backgrounds. And some scars, there are 16 scars here. There are seven main sub scars. And these are passages through different levels of existence, such that as one, one wants to perform, one wants to have a child then the Garbhodana Samskara is meant to bring a, a good soul into the womb through preparing the womb room through this holy act of penances and austerities by chanting certain mantras, especially the Hare Krishna mantra. Um, the Adhubhava Garbhodana Samskara is quite, uh, what we say, detailed. We don't follow that. Prabhupada made it simple. He said that the husband and wife should very sanctimoniously come together and chant uh, a minimum of 50 rounds of japa before one connects in order to bring about a child. So that is necessary. There's also a, there is also one samskar even before Garbhadan samskar, which I'm not sure of. And then, of course, you have Anaprast and Karana, so many different samskars, Upanaya samskara, which is really uh, to give one entrance into spiritual practice in a very realistic way. So, but we don't find that uh, there in Western civilization. People born in Western countries are not given any kind of purification. Prabhupada said, even when the baby is born, they take the baby and they dip it into some water, clean it off, and that's considered to be sufficient. Where in the Vedic culture, there is a whole series of, of rituals in order to uh, bring that little infant to a pure, more purified state of existence because birth in the material world is not considered to be a spiritual activity. It is the karma of a living entity which forces them to appear in a certain womb in a certain, with a certain set of characteristics. The material world is by nature contaminating so birth is one of the contaminating forms of material life, one of the more outstanding ones. So there are some rituals, some uh, rules, some ceremonies, but you don't find that in Western societies. Therefore, when devotees who came to Krishna consciousness, many of them in the early days and even today, are pretty much asked to go from the mode of passion and ignorance and perform activities on, in, that are transcendent. Um, it seems to be very, um, what we say, foreign, difficult. Uh, the consciousness has not been prepared for these higher states of practice. And therefore, people don't know. Therefore, Prabhupada mentions here Although he says the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is sufficient in this age, and that's all that one needs, since this is mentioned here in one of the, in one of the statements here. Um, if you go down the page into the second paragraph, you'll find it there, I think. 
go to the second paragraph. Yeah, especially in this age, Sankirtan, an age of Kali, Sankirtan alone is sufficient. But in order to get, as it says here, in order to remain pure and clean, uh, stay clean. Clean means develop pr proper consciousness, purity, getting to the mode of goodness. Deity worship is um, accompanied. So we have Pancharatriki Vidhi, which is the rules and regulations for worshiping the deity according to the Shastras. And you have Bhagavad Vidhi, which is the glorification of the Lord, that particular chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and hearing and speaking Srimad Bhagavatam and other. Each group has a number of different uh, activities that go in these two particular categories. So Prabhupada makes this point here. And Sankirtan alone is sufficient. Kalir dosha nidri rajan asti eko mahagun kirtana eva krishna mukta sangam param bhajan. This verse is spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Pariksha, describing that one who chants the holy name of the Lord, of course, chants in a purified consciousness, can uh, reach perfection very quickly. Perfection means that one has, is completely freed from the effects of the three modes of material and energy, uh, either through the contamination is relieved and the desire to, uh, to uh, enjoy the three modes of material nature, both are completely eradicated and one is in the consciousness of Krishna continuously. That is the power of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It is very, very direct and powerful. But Kali Yuga is, you know, we hear, Prayena Aprayesa Sabda, Kalo Yugen Jasmin Janaha, Manda Sumanda Mateo Manya Bhagya Upandutaha, Manda Sumanda Mateo Manya Bhagya Padutaha. People are lazy, misguided, unlucky, and always disturbed. That is, the, that is the characteristic of this age of Kali that's mentioned in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, in order to solidify one's, or what we say, fortify one's progress in spiritual life, one should practice deity worship along with them. Deity worship means going to the temple and seeing the deity, offering respects to the deity, bowing down before the deity, offering prayers before the deity, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra before the deity, and accepting the remnants of foodstuffs before for the deity like that. And of course, if one is living within the home, um, if one is uh, initiated, then one can also establish deity worship within the home and the home then becomes like mandir. mandir the, the home becomes a mandir and it's no longer just a house. People live in the house, but devotees live in the place where the Lord is being worshiped and that is called a mandir. It's no longer a home anymore. It is a place of devotion, a place of worship. Uh, so these two processes have to go, but we have to focus again here. It looks quite, uh, what is the word, condemning. Yes, such persons such as Yogyavoki, Jamini, and others who are uh, very expert at ch chanting Vedic mantras and reciting various uh, verses from the Vedas, they, uh, it says their, their consciousness is dull. <laughs> Why? Because uh, they spend all their time simply for these processes, which just simply elevate one to greater levels of material happiness. And that's all. Neglecting or not giving any attention to the, to the essence of one's elevation, and that is bhakti. 
So as this verse is a series of verses spoken by Yamaraj, and then the previous verses, especially verse number 22, Yamaraj explains that of all the activities in human society, the most, the highest of all activity is devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the essence of that devotional service is to chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And that is the essence of all. Iti sodasakam nam nam, kali kamasanasanam, nate parate upayo, sarva veda shudrishyate. This verse is from the Kali Santara Upanishads, which is spoken by Lord Brahma himself, where he says that after searching through all Vedic knowledge, one cannot find a more easy, direct, and sublime process of spiritual elevation than chanting these 16 names. And the second half of the verse is the Mahamantra. So that's from the Upanishads, which the Upanishads are the essence of the Vedas. So one who studies the Vedas properly and not simply chanting the different mantras of the Vedas in order to find ways to elevate oneself through various types of rituals, pujas, homas, various types of yagyas. Uh, one who is actually looking for the essence of spiritual will see that the Vedas do emphasize the glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And because this age is called Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga is the most difficult age to practice spiritual life. People are not qualified and the age is very contaminating. Materially, you'll see, you'll see, you can just see where do people spend most of their time? They're either making money or spending money. <laughs> That's what they do. This is this age. Everyone is working in various types of occupations to get money. And what do they do? They spend it. <laughs> they spend it on family. They spend it on recreation. They spend it on various types of material uh, things that are available in the marketplace. So this is age. People just want to enjoy their senses. <laughs> That's all. And uh, economic development is the goal in order to get sense enjoyment. But sense enjoyment is not the standard where happiness can be found. Happiness cannot be found through contact with the senses and the sense objects. Krishna says, Yehi samsparshi ja boga dukha yoniya evate avanta manta kunte nateshu ramate buddha. Uh, Krishna speaks this verse from the fifth chapter, verse number 22 in the Bhagavad Gita, where he says sense gratification simply leads to suffering. That's all. <laughs> and one who is actually intelligent doesn't waste time in such uh, frivolous activities. Because real satisfaction, progress, happiness, and ultimately the goal of life is found in the process of glorification of the Lord as given in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Prabhupada uses this particular verse to make a point, a historical point, that when Prabhupada was ready to open the Krishna Balaram temple, the first, uh, what we say, uh, Western temple in Sri Vrindavan Dham. There are 5,000 temples in Sri Vrindavan Dham, some small, some large, some in between, or so many. Practically every building is a temple in one form or another. But Prabhupada wanted to establish us in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So um, he uh, organized his devotees and made a plan to uh, uh, construct a grand temple of Krishna Balaram. And he did. It was a very 
uh, arduous endeavor because in order to build the temple in Vrindavan, they had to have the materials and to get the materials was very, very difficult. The government was just putting more and more tax and more and more price on building materials and devotees were not even getting the materials. So the temple took longer than Prabhupada wanted. In fact, he had postponed the opening of the temple a few times. Finally, in 1975, in on Ram Nomi, the temple was opened. But Prabhupada, as he mentions here, in order to give credence to our, our society and, and for the residents of Vrindavan, especially the, the Brahmins and other, those who are other, uh, who engage in various types of spiritual activities in Vrindavan, to recognize our movement as being authorized, we did this very costly yagya. It's on video. You can actually see this whole thing. There's a series of video the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple. It's a uh, series of videos. I forgot. I think it was it was actually Yadubara, Yadubara Prabhu, put these these series of videos in in a in historical sequence. And one of them is the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple. And you'll see very costly yagyas are being performed. Prabhupada was simply waiting for these yogis to end. <laughs> and he says here, we had the, uh, simultaneously, we had the Sankirtan and the, the Vedic ceremonies going on simultaneously. But Prabhupada said, it was simply enough to have Harinam Sankirtan. That would have been enough to authorize our temple as a bona fide temple. But the residents of Vrindavan, the Brahmins and others would not have accepted that particular ceremony as being bonafide, nor would they have accepted the Western devotees as being Brahmanas. So in order to establish us within Vrindavan, amongst the Vrindavan uh, spiritualists, the Brahmanas and others, Prabhupada engaged many of many Brahmins to do this ritualistic performance. And then you could see Prabhupada, even during these ceremonies, he was waiting for it to end. He wanted just to focus on Harinam Sankirtan. Because Harinam, wherever the, wherever the Sankirtan movement is, the place becomes Vaikuntha. All rules, regulations, rituals, uh, whatever else is there within the Vedic standard for performances of spiritual activities automatically are included within the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So um, this, is, was, this was a very historical event. And Prabhupada takes the time and to make that point in one of his purports in the Srimad Bhagavatam to help us understand how powerful and how it's exclusive to chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is. So devotees, we need to regularly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And we also need to regularly perform kirtan. To chant japa is important and required. But japa and kirtan must go on side by side in our practice of devotional service. Kirtan is mentioned, Yajnai Sankirtan Prayai, Yajantihi Sumeda Saha. Those who have good intelligence, Prabhupada says, those whose brains actually are developed, not ones who have, Prabhupada said, the, the brain is filled up with cow dung. There's no brain there, there's just a lot of. A lot of stuff in there, but no, no intelligence. They don't understand the importance, nor do they engage in the Sankirtan movement. But devotees find Harinam Sankirtan as being important, powerful, and uplifting in our Krishna consciousness. 
For instance, here in uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia, we are starting on Friday and continuing until Tuesday. Uh, we will be having five days of kirtan along with the ceremonies of John Mastami and Srila Prabhupada's appearance. Five full days from morning till night of ceremonies, mostly Harinam Sankirtan. So this, uh, this is the essence of spiritual life. It attracts so many people, particularly those in Western societies. They uh, find that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is very, very enjoyable, very elevating, very attractive. So this is the way to attract more and more people to our movement through the performance Harinam Sankirtan. And ultimately, it is the essence of all practice. The devotees should not neglect the kirtan and simply chant japa, or as some people like to do, just do kirtan and don't chant on beats. We need both because both are given to us by the acharyas as a package for the performance, for the worship of Krishna in this age uh, by chanting his holy name. And so, um, although these great personalities who are authors and commentators on the Vedas, they are given some benefit, still they don't understand really the essence of spiritual practice. Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so we can uh, conclude here and see if there's any further discussion. <laughs> Hare Krishna, <clears throat> good Maharaj. Thank you so much for the nice class. Thank you so much. Uh, I request devotees if they have any questions or comments, um, or realizations, please go ahead. Yes, Mataji. Sri Devi Mataji. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lavanya. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, I do understand that deity worship and uh, our Japa must go simultaneously. But we find very often that people are happily engaging in Kirtan. They're enthusiastic about Kirtan, but when it comes to Japa, many people are not so enthusiastic or not so inclined. First and foremost, my question is, why is this so? Secondly, is it important to continue in Kirtan even if we are not so good at our Japa? If the answer to your second question is yeah, but if you practice Japa, you will also develop a taste for Japa. Um, japa requires a little bit more of the an, a personal effort, where in kirtan it's a combined effort, and therefore everyone is supporting each other by their devotion, by their enthusiasm. Japa appears to be more of a a uh, personal thing that requires uh, a place that is free from distraction. Uh, sufficient amount of time and a proper mindset in order to continue chanting. So it's an austerity, particularly in Kali Yuga, people's minds are not trained for, to focus on spiritual activities. Their minds are all over the place. 
-hmm. We find that even when we were beginning our Krishna consciousness in the early days, a lot of people in the Western countries were coming, but they could not sit down and chant Japa. Even today, people find it hard to, to actually go for extended amounts of time in Japa. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes a person will just sit down, they'll chant two or three rounds or get up, do something else and maybe go back again, try to chant some more. And their minds are always very flickering. It's simply listening to the restless mind. And so rather than being controlled by the mind, one should practice mind control, directing the mind by the intelligence towards the lotus feet of the Lord, which represents, you know, uh, concentration upon the Lord. So one has to practice. Mm. So it, it, it's, you might say it's a little bit more of a personal austerity to chant Japa, whereas Kirtan is, it's more powerful, sweeps you up faster, there's music, all of that is there. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. That was helpful. And, uh, you know, but the thing is, we should understand if you give Japa, uh, you know, enough time and attention and work at it, you'll find that with the goal, keeping in goal in mind that I want to chant nicely, I want to chant purely, working to develop that consciousness and in the practice, uh, endeavoring, then uh, and gradually you look forward to chanting job. It becomes nice. It becomes very nice. In many cases, there are people who prefer chanting japa over kirtan, just to show that they have developed a taste for that japa. Hmm. It's there. So the main thing would be to just keep plugging away at it and make a sincere effort to chant and to really give time and attention to the practice of chanting the holy name. And with that will come a taste for chanting. Is that what we can tell people? Yeah, and we can add that one should learn the process of chanting. Thank you. Guru. In other words, it's a devotional activity. We use certain techniques in order to uh, fortify the devotional expression, but it's all about devotion. Mm. Therefore, Prabhupada would give Prabhupada give a few statements. He would say, "One should one should chant and hear. Try to hear." And he would also say one should chant like a baby crying out for its mother. In other words, to chant in a state of helplessness. Don't try to conquer the holy name, but try to be conquered by the holy name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Thank you. That is very helpful. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Devotees, anybody have any more questions? I guess no. Uh, don't mind, can I have, uh, uh, yeah. may I ask one more question? Yes, yes, Mother. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have another question, please. Um, is there anything as too much chanting? Is there no. some imbalance? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, there's no such thing as too much chanting. There's only too little chanting. 
the scripture says satatam kirtayan toman. Satatam means always. Hmm. But isn't there a balance? Seven. Isn't isn't there a balance required between you know our various duties and chanting? Uh, if we put too much attention into our chanting and neglect other things, that's not good either, isn't it? Mm, if you're actually chanting, you'll be doing service too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You, you, Thank you. You, you may, why are you separating them? One who is chanting nicely will be enthusiastic to serve. And through the service, they'll also be, want to chant more. Mm. It's natural. It's just the nature of the holy name. It's Krishna. Krishna manifests himself as sadhana, service, and sadhya, all three in one. Mm. Yeah, so there's no. And those on the who also reach perfection, they chant 24 hours a day. They're working towards that. They're always chanting. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean they have beads, but they're always chanting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for explaining that. Yeah, that's the goal, actually. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, I would have a question connected to what uh, Sri Devi Mataji just asked, because uh, I would also say, uh, based on uh, all I heard, that uh, there is no, no such thing that uh, too much chanting, but sometimes we hear that someone is, when someone is a beginner devotee, and uh, in the beginning uh, is uh, very uh, enthusiastic and chants a lot, and uh, after that says that uh, as a result of the chanting, uh, too much purification came. Uh, so what should I think about this? Too much purification, you said? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's this, there's such a terminology that sounds like a, sounds like a, what they call a, in English an oxymoron, <laughs> too much purification. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they they think that, uh, so in the context, it, uh, I heard it, it was that uh, purification came and it was the difficult type of thing that uh, actually too much hardship. No. Because, but we do engage people in practical service because in order to purify them from their tendency to serve the material energy, you have to serve Krishna. Chanting leads to service, service leads to more chanting. And more chanting, lead, yeah, service. At one point they amalgamate themselves into one, where there's no, a person is always chanting and always serving constantly. But in the beginning, we have to engage people in practical activities because their tendency is to be in the mode of passion. And therefore, they can't simply chant. If they decide to sit down and chant always, they can't do that. Their minds won't allow that too restless. They may be able to chant for some time. But Yeah, because I uh, sometimes I see uh, devotees coming and uh, they seem to be so enthusiastic and uh, you know I I always think that I I may never know what stage uh, they are on so maybe in their previous lives they uh, they practiced already Krishna consciousness and maybe they are much ahead of me so it's it's not possible to see uh, what is inside. So yeah. It's, anyway. uh, it's not important either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, when, when they speak something, I just uh, never know 
how should I react? Well, if someone's speaking incorrectly, then you then you can recognize that. But if someone is just practicing differently, some people, you'll find there are people who emphasize more the service and others emphasize more the, the chanting. People have inclinations for certain services. People have more inclinations for chanting. And these are both something that has developed and there's also a particular nature to there are people who can't, who, you, you know, if you try to ask them to sit, study and chant throughout the day, they can't do that. They have to do something. It's just a certain psycho physical makeup of a personality. But that's material just to show how tendencies develop towards acti spiritual activities. A person may have certain tendencies, others may have a different tendency. But in any case, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra must accompany all of that activities. We have that verse from the, um, uh, let me see, let me see if I can uh, find this particular verse here. I have to, uh, Go somewhere else for a minute to find this verse. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me see where that verse is. Uh. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. Smartavya satatam vishnur vishmatavya najatu chit sarva vidani shayda sum eta your eva kinkaram. Krishna is the origin in, of Vishnu. Let's see. He should always, let me see here. I can't read what I'm looking at here. Uh, Krishna is the origin. He should always be, be remembered and not forgotten at, at all times. All rules and regulations and prohibitions of the Shastra should, uh, are servants of these two principles. What is the principle? This is from the Padma Purana. One should always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. Let me see what verse that is. Um, can someone look up the verse Smartavya Satatam Vishnu Vishmatavya Najatusha? It's somewhere in Madhya Leela. It's That's a verse co coming from the uh, from the Mahabharata, which is in one of the purports of Madhya Leela. Smartavya Sati. Do you have that one? Yes, good much. I'm trying. Um, I'll search in okay. the Smartavya Satatam Vishnu. I think it's Madhya Leela chapter 22. 20, 20 gold, um, Oh, one second, but that's nice. Verse 113, something like that. I can't remember the reference. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting and exclusive verse. It's a sweeping verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I got it. Good manage one second. I'll show you. Okay, post it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 22113, Smart to Dav Satatam Vishnu Vishmar Tavi Najati Sarva King Karaha. Krishna is the origin of Vishnu. He should always be remembered, never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras should be servants of these two principles, Prabhupada's purport. 
This is from the Padma Purana. All the regulative principle directing given by the spiritual master. There are many, but one should always remember Krishna and forget him and never forget him. This is possible one chants the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Therefore, one must strictly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 24 hours daily. One may have other duties to perform under the direction of the spiritual master, but he must first abide by the spiritual master's orders to chant a certain number of rounds. In our Krishna conscious movement, we have recommended me if I chant at least 16 rounds, that's absolutely necessary. If one does this, he'll never forget Krishna. This is the essence of all the regulative principles and the order of the spiritual master. And Prabhupada goes on to explain one may sell books, one may do so many different activities, but these two principles, always remember Krishna and never forget him. These two fifth principles form the basic background of all Krishna consciousness. The Prabhupada does say, yeah, one should chant 24 hours daily. So is that, so we can't say there's too much chanting. Mm -hmm. But, I just, but people can't do that, and even if they try, they won't, it won't work because they're, stu they're still afflicted by the lower modes of the energy. So therefore, we support the chanting by performing other activities which help to purify one's consciousness. So this verse that we were originally speaking about, going to the mode of goodness or adopting uh, Deity worship is the means to support the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Yeah, the deity worship is necessary in order to purify us so we can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's interesting how everything is connected. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, the I just. The, the idea is to come to this stage where you're always chanting. That is the goal. It would be really nice to achieve that. <laughs> I, I'm still very far, unfortunately. Uh, well, we still have to practice the rules and regulations. The rules and regulations elevate our consciousness above the three modes because they are supportive of the practice of devotional service. If we don't follow the rules and regulations as given in the Shastras, we cannot eventually come to the stage of continuous devotional service. Can I ask one thing about this purport? Because uh, uh, I just didn't really understand this part that uh, when Srila Prabhupada mentions that this is possible when one chants the Hare Krishna mantra. I mean, I understand that, well, that uh, when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, we can remember Krishna, but uh, I suppose there are also other ways. So yeah. why, why uh, chanting is, is emphasized here? Yeah. This is the essence. And this is the, the Yuga Dharma, or the means for self-realization in this age, is the Harinam Sankirtan, or glorification of the Lord by chanting his holy names, the Maha Mantra. That is, every Yuga, and there are four Yugas, each one has a particular Dharma that is emphasized as the means for self-realization. So in previous yugas, people would also chant the Hare Krishna mantra, but it wasn't the Yuga Dharma. Therefore, they were required to perform the Yuga Dharma along with whatever other activities that they performed. So this is, but in this age, it's the Yuga Dharma. Because this age is so degraded that, that the process has been made quite simple in practice anyway. Thank you, it's, it's, it's clear now. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please Krishna. ask one, one more question, just leading from this discussion, if you don't mind. Continue. So, 
just uh, mulling over what Radha Vinodini asked and your answer, I was wondering what, what would I say to this mother? She's about a middle-aged lady. She has two children. And she was telling me that she's not a fanatic. She's an initiated devotee. She remembers Krishna all the time. She prays to Krishna all the time, but she chants only five rounds. Her stance is, my children need attention. I work two jobs. I have to run the house. I have to do all my duties nicely. And I'm constantly remembering and praying to Krishna. And uh, I'm not a fanatic. Krishna is not a numbers person. He understands my heart and my mind and how sincerely I'm praying to him and calling out to him. So it's not important that I should chant all 16 rounds because I'm doing everything else. Well, she took initiation, right? Yes. What did she promise that initiation? <laughs> well, that part is glossed over. She was trying to say that she's not a fanatic and people who are insistent on 16 rounds are fanatical. No. It's not fanatical. It's 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 the it's the instructions of the if the instruction of the spiritual master is fanatical, then then what uh, what is actually fanaticism? Prabhupada said, out of all my instructions to my disciples to chant sixteen rounds on beads without fail each day is my most important instruction. Is that fanaticism? Or is it just simply supporting the Shastras and the previous Acharyas? So why take initiation if you can't follow? Why do circumstances later arise where you dismiss your chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra? Why don't you just eat less? Why don't you just sleep less so you have more time for chanting? That's what Prabhupada would say. He says, you, have, you, you don't chant, but you're, if you don't have time for chanting, then skip a meal. But the thing is, we don't make time because we don't have the taste. It's an excuse only. Once the taste develops, then you'll... you'll You'll say, you'll say, as the, the scriptures say, why 16 rounds? Why not 16,000 rounds? No mm -hmm. taste. Uh, yeah, we, our material life is more important. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we take birth again so we can further our, our desire to have good material life. <laughs> we might take birth in a higher material planets because we've done some devotional service in this life but still within we're still in the material world so my reply to her is then i'm a fanatic if that's the definition i said if i don't chant my 16 rounds i'll go crazy you know i Good. need to chant my rounds just to stay sane <laughs> otherwise yeah. i'll go mad <laughs> yeah Good. So that was Good. Yeah, that's the way that's the way everyone should be. Okay, I was just wondering whether I was being too heavy or I was being. Uh... Well, the word disciple means discipline, and the first principle of discipline is chat sixteen rounds, follow the four regulative principles that we promised at initiation. It's not a promise, it's a vow. A vow is a sacred act which is made before the Lord, before the deity, before the fire, before the assembly of devotees, before the spiritual master. It's a vow. It doesn't take much time. Just like I, I can give you an example. Um, one aspiring devotee came to me she had her second child and then she still had a little girl and then she had a second child and now she had to manage a baby and a little girl so she was not chanting her 16 rounds she approached me for advice and i simply told her you do four 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 and four four times four so four times during the day you find a period where you can chant four rounds. 
And she did it. And she said, oh, this is really good. I'm able to get my 16 rounds done nicely now. So if we can't find four half hours during the day out of 24. So that means where there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. It's all based on desire. Mm. OK, thank you, Guru Maharaj. I needed to hear gain well, we clarity should, on we, that. We, because, should, yeah, we, we, should not, we should not take the instructions of the spiritual master as optional. That's one of the offenses to the holy name. Therefore, because she's not following the instructions of the spiritual master, she's committing an offense. It's one of the offenses to the holy name, which makes it harder for her to recognize the importance for chanting that the holy name due to that offense mm -hmm. if she wants to all she has to do is follow that simple process four 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 so, four but we don't want to be offensive to devotees at the same time we don't want to offend them so no, apart from well, you can you can you can lead a horse to the water but you can't make them drink <laughs> so if you can very nicely use yourself as an example for what you're trying to teach, then that is the best form of teaching. Priest, example is higher than precept. And if you're questioned, you can give an explanation based on, it's not like you should say, well, if I don't chant my 16 rounds, I go crazy. They'll think, well, that's just for you. That doesn't apply to me. Mm. Mm. But that's not, a, that's not a good answer. That's mm. not convincing to anyone. Mm. So what would be important would be to emphasize that this is a vow, this is a sacred vow. This is the uh, instruction of the spiritual master. No, all you have to say is because you don't have a taste for chanting, you don't chant. And if you want a taste, chant. <laughs> Mataji, Sri Devi Mataji. I think there is a connection problem, Guru Maharaj. Sri. Okay, we can go on and see if there's anyone else. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Devotees, if you have any more questions or comments. I don't think we have any more questions, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. So tomorrow we're doing our group at uh, uh, Harrisburg. 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 Harrisburg tomorrow. Yeah, yes. tomorrow's Harrisburg at at uh, twelve o'clock um, in the UK time. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And then Friday, we'll begin a series of lectures um, centered around uh, the glorification of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Down. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Hmm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your association and for a very nice class yeah. and nice discussion. Yeah, I hope to be regular again. We, I just stopped traveling now for a so I'll be back on a, on a regular basis. Yes, Guru Maharaj, that's great to hear. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you for your kind donation. It's a pleasure, Guru Maharaj, to serve you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj.